Part 5. Theories of Reading Comprehension. The Structure Building Model. So now that we've talked about the simple view of reading, I wanted to segue into what will be your next two video clips, and that is regarding the models of reading comprehension. So there are at least seven major uh, contemporary theories of reading comprehension. And if we were reading specialists, we would probably know all of them inside and out. However, we are librarians, not reading specialists. And more importantly, we have a serious time crunch this summer. And so my job in this class is to cut to the chase of what we need in the library. And so with that in mind, I have selected the two major theories that tie directly into where Judy Morellian is going with her books on the different reading comprehension strategies for librarian instruction. That being said, there are a lot of things in common to all theories of reading comprehension. And so let's first talk about some of these commonalities before we discuss the specifics of this week's featured model. Reading comprehension is the processing of information to extract meaning, and specifically we are creating meaning from the text we have encountered. Comprehension and decoding go hand in hand. All models of reading comprehension theory assume that the lower level decoding skills are firmly in place in order for comprehension to happen. The term mental representation refers to the outcome of the reader's text comprehension processing and the reader's mental representation is made up of three things information from the text information related to the text and the inferences that are generated so what are inferences inferences are the assumptions that the reader makes in connecting information in the text to information that is not currently in the text. There are a lot of different types of inferences and the construction integration model in particular, which we will discuss later in the summer, makes a lot of specific differentiations between these types of inferences. But two types of inferences are common in all of the reading comprehension models. One is a type of inference that connects current information to information that was previously encountered in the text. These are called bridging inferences. An example of this might be, James crumbled the note into a ball and threw it in the fireplace. He watched as the ashes floated up the chimney. Here the reader must make several inferences. They must realize that the note was made of paper. They must infer that a fire was burning since that wasn't explicitly stated because the paper turned into ashes. The reader must also have background knowledge of fires that if you throw paper into a burning fire it will turn to ash. And they must understand that ash is lightweight and pieces of it can easily be blown away. See how much had to be inferred from these two sentences which were connected to one another? But it wasn't hard because we had background knowledge. Another type of inference connects current information to knowledge that is not in the text. These are called associative inferences. And here, even more so than with bridging inferences, the reader must bring in their background knowledge. An example of this might be, Marianne looked at her calendar. It was December 22nd she decided to skip her errands near Townside Mall. If we asked the reader, why was Mary Ann motivated to skip her errands? The reader would have to have some background knowledge in order to posit an answer. They would have to realize that December 22nd is very close to Christmas, which is a crowded shopping season in America. They would have to understand that malls are crowded shopping places at Christmas time, and the traffic surrounding malls can be frustrating to deal with. They would have to consider Marianne's point of view, that her errands might not be very important in the context of dealing with all that traffic. None of this information is directly implied by the text. The reader would just have to know it from prior experience. And the two sentences by themselves do not necessarily connect in a direct manner, like with bridging inferences. So a big concept in these models of reading comprehension is the role of memory in skilled reading. 
and the connectionist architecture is a concept that is common to all the models. This is the idea that memories are represented by nodes and links between them, and that they vary in the strength of their connections. The connectionist architecture assumes that multiple memories or concepts can be activated at one time. Activation can spread between similar or related concepts, so when one concept is activated, it causes kind of a chain reaction to similar concept nodes. One last idea that is common to all the models is that these processes supporting comprehension are automatic or unconscious to the reader. We don't have to sit down and consciously think about our mental representations. If someone throws out a word or idea to you, for example, seagulls, your brain automatically thinks of related concepts. You might think of the beach, or the sound of the ocean, or the feel of the sun, or if you've never been to the beach, or seen a seagull, then presumably you don't have these unconscious thoughts. At best, you might know that a seagull is a bird, and you might picture a bird. It all depends on the strength of your individual background knowledge on the particular concept at hand. This is a good place to start talking about the structure building model. The structure building model was proposed by Dr. Morton Gernsbacher in 1990. And yes, spoiler alert, Morton is a female. That's a picture of Morton Ann Gernsbacher, and she's lovely, right? Dr. Gernsbacher worked at the University of Oregon and later the University of Wisconsin at Madison. She wanted to develop a theory of comprehension that could be applied regardless of medium, so not just text but video or still picture, for example. And so her model describes comprehension in terms of three primary processes, laying a foundation, mapping information onto that foundation, and shifting to new structures. There are two mechanisms in place to handle the encoding of memories. These are called enhancement and suppression. But let's start at the beginning. Laying a foundation is what happens when one encounters information for the first time. So this is an iterative process that happens at the beginning of stories, paragraphs, sentences, anytime your mind encounters something new. It is how your mind creates a new memory node, and it is very resource demanding. From other research on comprehension, we have learned some things which actually support Gernsbacher's idea about laying a foundation. One is that research has shown that readers show slowing reading times during the beginning stages of a passage, such as the first sentence of a paragraph. This demonstrates the heavier processing load your brain is going through in taking in something new. Another piece of evidence is the research which demonstrates that the first sentence in a story provides better cues for remembering the remainder of the story. So again, encountering something brand new does something special in encoding this information to a memory node. So, after our minds have encountered something new, and a foundation is laid on which to store this new information, the new information is mapped onto the structure. So, in thinking about the previous slide with the foundation of a house, mapping is when the framing of the house begins, kind of the bones of the house, and in mapping, the information is stored to that particular memory node. As similar or related information comes in, substructures are built near that memory node in a process called shifting. So with our house analogy, the first house to be built on the street occurs through mapping, and then the mind shifts to build adjacent houses on the same street. And all of these houses are on, on the same street have something in common. The encoding of our memories works in a similar way. Enhancement and suppression refer to the actual mechanisms, making all of this memory activation happen. Enhancement is what happens when the reader adds incoming related information to the foundation structure, and thereby activates this memory node. Suppression is when the reader reduces activation to information in a node, because it is unrelated to the relevant topic at hand. 
So putting this together, we see that readers enhance information that is related to prior knowledge and suppress information that appears irrelevant. I say readers, but really there is a caveat here. I should say skilled readers. Skilled readers learn how to block out or inhibit activation of irrelevant information. They learn how to hone in on text that makes sense to the topic at hand. Less skilled readers just take it all in and are not very discerning. And imagine how overloaded they consequently feel by their text. According to this model, these less skilled readers are creating additional and unnecessary substructures in response to their text, which kind of clutters up their memory nodes. They just haven't developed a very good suppression system yet. So as you can see, the structure building model is useful in explaining what is going on with our more skilled readers and our less skilled readers. It gives us some clues as to our instruction. Clearly, if we can teach our young readers techniques as to how to discern within the text and connect information to prior knowledge, they will be able to effectively use the enhancement and suppression mechanisms. Gernsbacher's research with the structure building model spent far more time on narrative text, and so this model best supports the processes behind this type of text comprehension. Okay, so with the structure building model in mind, we will now tackle our first chapter of Judy Morillion's book. This week's reading is on chapter three, on activating and building background knowledge. As you read this chapter, think about how this model of reading comprehension comes into play. And in a few weeks, we'll talk about our second model of comprehension, the construction integration model. That's all for now. Bye.